In here, the recent COVID-19 statistics in China have raised global concerns. Millions of cases are said to be recorded daily in that country. The response from the rest of the world has seen extra safety measures being put in place for visitors from China. But the health department here at home says there's no need to panic yet. Here's director of the Center of Epidemic Response and Innovation at Stellenbosch University and also UKZN's research innovation sequencing platform, Professor Tulio de Oliveira. Thank you so much for your time, Prof. We do appreciate it. Uh, I'm wondering what is going on. It seems as though the world is in a panic all of a sudden because of the massive numbers that we are seeing when it comes to COVID-19 in China. Can you just give us an overview of if there is a need for us to panic? Okay, thank you, Heidi, and, and, and thank you for the invitation and Happy New Year to you. And, and to all your viewers, yeah. And, and simply, there is no, no need to panic, yeah. It is, it is the opposite, yeah. At we, we are really following very, very uh, in detail what's happening in China. Yeah, at the moment on the variant uh, side, we are dominated by two sublineages of the BA5 Omicron. It's the same Omicron, the same one that calls a resurgence with very small number of cases and deaths in South Africa around June, and some of your viewers may remember. And 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 that if and is introduced in South Africa, which the same lineage is circulating, is very unlikely to cause a big wave of infection with, with hospitalization and death. So as the scientists that, that we run the network for genomics in South Africa, we are alerted, we are continuous genomic surveillance, but we have, we, we have no reason at the moment to be very concerned. Okay, why, uh, could you maybe just indicate to us why we are seeing that massive spike of COVID-19 infection in, uh, in China? And uh, I'm glad you mentioned then the, fa the fact that we are still seeing it being Omicron variants because um, when we saw the Omicron variant being brought about, there was so much panic and confusion as to now there's a new variant, is it worse than the previous variants that we've seen? But maybe just tell us why we're we seeing this increase in, uh, in COVID infections in China, and is it infection of concern? So are, are, these, are these people that are being infected by COVID-19 passing away, or are they just getting mildly, mildly sick and having a bit of flu? I think uh, I think that the, the easiest way to explain is to your viewers uh, to, to remember what's happened in our first wave. Yeah. So, for example, China has been in a lockdown. Uh, any kind of infections that they get, they lock down the whole city, sometimes the whole province for days or, or, or weeks or months. Yeah. So they have been doing that for the past two years. And then it's not surprised when they decided to stop the lockdown, what they call the COVID zero policy. Yeah. And, and, then, and then the virus is spreading very fast. So it's just a process of decreasing the restrictions. Yeah. The, the, the good thing is that we are two uh, almost um, three years after we, uh, the start of the COVID pandemic. So now, even that they are having a big wave, they, 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 they already have population with high vaccination coverage, and I believe that they are increasing on, on that. Yeah. On your second question, it is again, it is the same lineage, it's the same uh, virus. Yeah, it's Omicron, it's more specific, it's a sub-lineage called BA5 um, family that, 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 that haven't uh, caused much problem in South Africa. We, we affect by that lineage around in June, and now the same lineage, the same Omicron variants now causing the infection in China as they release the, the, the restrictions. And what we are talking is about millions of infections a day, and at the moment the, the, the mortality data is not very reliable, but some people estimate to up to 5,000 or 9,000 deaths a day in China, mostly folk, uh, restricted on people with very advanced age. That's crazy numbers, though. If you're telling me that it's about 5,000 to 9,000 deaths a day, is that unvaccinated or vaccinated? Do we know? 
So, so, so what we know very well, it is that people that are vaccinated will have a much, much, much lower death, uh, not only that rate or what we call case fatality rate, but they also going to develop much lower level of, of, um, of, of symptoms. Yeah. So it's quite clear it has been like that in every country in the world that the vaccines really show to really save uh, lives. And for the information that we have in China, it's mostly on people with very advanced age above 70, 80 or 90. A lot of time Asian people will live, will live, will live a long time. Yeah. And some of them are unvaccinated and or they have not receive a booster and that's why it's so important for any of, of our individuals in South Africa that are worried that they have family members that, that are in the vulnerable group to really think about, about getting a booster yeah and that's the best way to protect oneself. Mm, certainly I just think that those numbers daily are are quite alarming um, but you've indicated there's no need to panic at this stage but it seems as though there are proposed restrictions in the US and, and Italy but you've also mentioned the fact that this is likely not to be effective so you know initially when COVID-19 hit nobody really understood what was going on there was so much confusion countries were imposing these hard lockdowns and travel restrictions and in hindsight you know many are saying that might have not been the best optional solution um, but you are having countries now saying perhaps we should relook at travelers coming from China is that the best approach though so 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 uh, unfortunately these restrictions that they are trying to put in South Africa, we understand very well when they put the severe travel ban in South Africa for discovering the Omicron variant. It had zero effect. Yeah, the Omicron was the one that caused like up to 70 to 80 percent of the infections in the world, even with a very extreme travel ban to South Africa. So one thing that we know that, that travel bans do not work, especially if it is focused in one or two countries. Yeah, the only ones that seem to be work when you close your country from any any external people from outside the world, which is quite a very extreme way. For example, New Zealand and Australia did that for, for, for the first year of the pandemic. Yeah. So just closing one country like China or, or, or to ask people to test before they get in the plane is also not effective. The tests only fetch infections around three to five days or the pain of the test seven days after infection. So a large percentage of people as they get a plane, they're still going to test negative, yeah, but they have the virus and planes are very good environments to, 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 to get a large infection yeah, because you, you have very short, you don't have social distance and, and, and you don't have a lot of rec recycling of air. Uh, so the restrictions that they are talking at the moment, they are light, they are talking about testing before enter a plane or enter in a country yeah and about potential travel ban which we know none of them um, effective and the best thing that we suggest to countries like south africa or the us and uh, europe it is to focus on increasing genomic surveillance yeah and following their own infections yeah so in case a wave come what we think that's very unusual to happen in south africa we can respond quick okay J prof just for clarity purposes is south africa seeing um a concerning spike in infection or is it still within the okay you're shaking your head so <laughs> is it still within the the range of you know what we've been seeing um, throughout the last couple of months or so. Yes, so 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 South Africa at the moment is in a in a good phase. We don't see increase of infections. We don't see increase of hospitalization, and neither we see increase on excess deaths. So that's the three different measurements that we we see. And when we do genomic surveillance, which we're still doing, we're still one of the best countries in the world doing that. We don't see any unusual variants. Yeah, and of course we needed that. We needed a new year. We need a holiday season. Yeah, to. to to really unwind that and move forward. So at the moment, the news in South Africa are very positive. Yeah, from our team that lead genomic surveillance, we are not concerned with introduction from China, but we are alerted and we will continue 
doing our weekly genomic surveillance on Tuesday. On, on the third, I have a, a meeting with the World Health Organization. To, to, I am part of a group of 25 world experts that will discuss the situation in China. By Friday next week, we have a meeting with our network that will release a new report on the genomics surveillance in South Africa. We just released one last week, and we don't see anything unusual, and we don't see anything to be of concern at the moment. Fantastic. I want us to quickly go into the issue of vaccinations um, because, you know, we've seen in recent weeks and even months of there being much criticism that the vaccines didn't work and that the vaccines have, called long -term, uh, have caused long-term illnesses and health concerns for people. Um, and, you know, we, ha we don't have the greatest vaccination rate in this country. Uh, many have opted not to get vaccinated. The health department has had to discard of some vaccines, which is really uh, sad if you actually think about how desperate we were to get these vaccines. But at this moment, people might be looking at the situation and going, I haven't been vaccinated or I haven't gone to get my booster. What's the point of getting it now? Do you advise people to still do this? Yeah. So, 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 just just one fact: South Africa has a very, very high population immunity. Yeah, we estimate over ninety-seven percent of people in South Africa have previous immunity to COVID, either through vaccination, previous infection, or both. What we call hybrid immunity. So, the situation of in the immunity coverage in South Africa is very good. Yeah. At the moment, we personally, we uh, our whole team, we we get boosted uh, when we are uh, when we are for for the boost. Yeah, I, I personally have read for those. Yeah, we work very close with this virus. We respond to outbreaks. Yeah, and at the moment, the main population that should be thinking about getting a booster would be people that are in the more susceptible uh, um, groups, uh, people with advanced age, with strong comorbidities, yeah. And one thing that was clear from the whole pandemic, yeah, is that what allowed us to go back to normal, like in South Africa, the rest of the world, was the vaccines, yeah. The vaccine had a small, very, very small rate of side effects, but in general has been a very successful tool in our arsenal and that's the main reason why we are not too concerned about what's happened in China. South Africa do have a high vaccination rate on people above 50 years and that's the ones that really matter. Okay, fantastic. So just your last comments, Prof. There's no need to panic even though it seems as though the world uh, seems to be a bit of in a panic at the moment because of what's happening in China. But, um, you know, just the way you do your surveillance and sequencing, there's nothing to panic about at this stage. So, 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 yes, as I mentioned, Ed, we, we are alerted. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's why we do as that that have a very effective genomics surveillance system yeah at the moment we don't see any reason for concern but we will keep following that uh, very closely and if we see anything unusual we're going to follow our process that inform our government our, our health minister and also inform the africa cdc and the world health organization which south africa has been a shining example on how the communication between scientists government and public and we will keep that but for especially first of the year of 2023 to all your viewers there is no reason to be concerned yeah and again but for people that have people in vulnerable situations advanced age you may consider getting a booster which is for free and is very effective okay fantastic thank you so much for your time this evening uh, prof we do appreciate it and we wish you all the best for 2023 i think you do phenomenal work so we really do appreciate it that's uh, professor tulio de Oliveira from the university of KwaZulu-Natal. And as you heard from him, there is no need to panic. The Department of Health has also issued a short statement and notice to say that South Africans do not need to panic and should there be any cause for concern, they will alert the country uh, on time uh, should there be any changes when it comes to the COVID-19 infections.